Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and we've been talking a lot about macOS Ventura, but the bottom line is, is macOS Monterey is the workhorse, and Apple just released the 12.6.2 update, and I'm going to go over everything that you're going to need to know about this update next. Apple released a bunch of updates along with 12.6.2, including Ventura 13.1, Big Sur 11.7.2, Safari 16.2 was included in the Ventura update, but is a separate download for both Monterey and Big Sur, Xcode 14.2, Command Line Tools for Xcode, and a couple days earlier, a 2.16 update for Apple Configurator 2, and on the iOS side, 16.2 is released for iPad and iPhone, along with the 15.7.2 for both iPhone and iPad, and for tvOS and HomePod 16.2, and watchOS got 9.2. Our demonstration Mac today is a 2020 M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. To update to the latest version, all you need to do is open up System Preferences and then click on Software Update, and then it should check for the updates immediately. And one thing you'll notice right off the bat is you'll see Mac OS Ventura here right front and center. Apple wants you to get to the latest OS, but you do not have to update to Mac OS Ventura right away if you're not ready. To get to the security updates or the Safari updates, all you need to do is click on More Info here, and then you'll see the updates that are available to you. So you'll see here 12.6.2 and Safari 16.2, as I mentioned earlier, was a separate update. You can install them both together by making sure they're both checkmarked and then click install now. Agree and make sure that you type in your username password and then it'll immediately start to download both Safari 16.2 and the 12.6.2 update. Okay, the download is complete and now it's in the preparing mode. The preparing mode is just like your iPhone or your iPad. The update will be prepared. And then once that's done, it'll be immediately reboot to the installer. And unfortunately, macOS Monterey does not have the new updated faster update time. So in my 13.1 video, the preparing only took about seven minutes and the installation time only took five minutes. The Monterey update is gonna take a little bit longer, usually around 20 to 25 minutes on the actual install time. So I'm gonna keep track of this here so we can compare when it's finished. Well, that was unexpected to say the least. This update for macOS Monterey 12.2 only took five minutes to install. Here we are at 11.25, 11.26, and that's the fastest I've ever seen Monterey go. So I don't know if Apple has actually backported that to Monterey. Because again, I've never seen it install that fast before on Mac OS Monterey. So that's why I keep track of these times to find out if Apple has actually changed anything. So this literally installed the same amount of speed as the Ventura update did for 13.1. Now keep in mind, this is a security update and there's not as many changes, but that's still significant. So let's take a look back at that. So here we go. On my 12.6 video, you can see here, I kept track, the preparing time took eight minutes. That's about right where it is here with seven to eight minutes on this update. When we look at the installation time, 17 minutes. Now that's a pretty significant jump compared to what we just saw here. So I'm gonna have to run a couple tests, but this could be really great. And again, this is only for M1, not Intel. So if this holds true, this could be a huge improvement for macOS Monterey. Let's take a look at the build version of 12.6.2. It is 21G320. So if you are installing any betas, you wanna make sure you're on the latest version. And if you are not, make sure you uninstall the beta profile and install the latest 12.6.2 update. I like to see how much space the macOS installation takes up after the installation of a macOS update. On 12.6.1, it was 15.41 gigabytes, and after 12.6.2, it was 12.42 gigabytes, so only a small size increase. Now, another thing I noticed was that after we started the installation and I saw that the download was about 1.64 gigabytes for the initial check for the update, once you clicked install or download, it immediately jumped to 2.46. So at least some additional pieces were being downloaded. And I was wondering if it might be the new Recovery OS version. So I booted this M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch to recovery to see if the recovery environment was updated and then go into utilities and then go to terminal. 
And then in terminal, you can just do what we did earlier to check the build version is just do SW underscore version. And then you can see that the recovery environment now is at 12.6.2. So that might be what that is. And I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit more. I might start keeping track of the version of recovery because it's not updated every time. In previous updates where it's only been like 12.1 for multiple releases, unless Apple has to put something in there to change or fix it, usually it stays the same version. Now, Apple also updated the M1 firmware to 8419.60.44. If you have a T2 Mac from 2018 to 2020, the Bridge OS was updated at 20.16.2059. Apple did release a full install for 12.6.2 that you can download, but they did not release a M1, M2 IPSW restore file. And what that means is, is that 12.6.1 is the final restore IPSW. What usually happens is, is that once a new version of the operating system comes out, they stop releasing IPSWs for previous versions of the operating system. You can see that Big Sur stopped at 11.6. So what's included in the Mac OS 12.6.2 update? On this document, Apple will usually always put what is changed in the update. Previous OSs do not get the detailed update notes that Ventura gets. As you can see here on 12.6.2, this update provides important security fixes and recommended for all users. There is no note in here about bug fixes. So they usually don't put in here anything that is fixed on the operating system side, only security patches. But what we do know is that there was, as I mentioned in my 13.1 Ventura video, a big Wi-Fi issue. What this involved was is that if you're using a Mac in an environment where there's a lot of people, like a college, there was issues where you would connect to Wi-Fi in M1 and M2, and after a while, you would just disconnect. And UCLA did a great job documenting this here and the word is that apple did fix this in 13.1 as they confirmed here but they also backported this to moderate 12.6.2 and Big Sur 11.7.1 so it's really great that they backported this was because this was a pretty big issue if you're working in a large environment like a company or a school now let's talk about the security content of the 12.6.2 update 13 individual cves were fixed in this update but they did not put the Safari WebKit vulnerabilities in here like they do for Ventura because it's a separate update. So they put those in the 16.2 Safari update page and there's eight individual WebKit vulnerabilities fixed in this update. Now I wanted to call attention to an issue about the Ventura 13.0.1 update that was released on November 9th. There was two CVEs that were addressed in this update, but Apple did not release a security update for Monterey or Big Sur. So we were left wondering, well, wait a minute, is it only affecting Ventura and not Monterey and Big Sur? Well, I found out today by looking at the notes, these two issues were found by Google's Project Zero security team, and they were remote user arbitrary code execution CVEs, and they were fixed in the 12.6.2 and the 11.7.2 update. But the problem is, is that these two operating systems were vulnerable to these two CVEs for 34 days until they released them yesterday. So that goes back to what I mentioned in previous updates is that Apple only focuses highly on the latest version of the operating system. Keep that in mind if you're in a high security environment and you want to stay the most secure, update to Ventura because that is going to be your OS of choice. Apple will fix the previous two operating systems, but again, only to a certain point because as I mentioned in this article here about software update for Apple devices, remember, because the dependency on architecture and system changes to any current version of Mac OS, for example, Mac OS Ventura, not all known security issues are addressed in previous versions, for example, Mac was 12. So again, keep that in mind. Now, since I didn't come out with a 12.6.1 video, I wanted to talk about what's new in Enterprise because this is the first update for Mac OS Monterey. If you're in a business or a school, that's important for you because the 13.1 Ventura update is no longer delayed by Apple. So you need to make sure that you are delaying or deferring this with your MDM vendor of choice to make sure that Ventura does not show up if you're trying to block it and you're not ready yet. What was mentioned here in 12.6.1 is this resolves an issue where Mac OS 13 could be delayed from appearing software update by using both a major and minor OS delay settings. 
Now, this also fixed a issue where the Wi-Fi menu was not available at the activation screen after performing an erase in all content and settings. You couldn't even connect to Wi-Fi to activate your Mac. So this was addressed in 12.6.1, but that's why we were going over the version of Mac OS Recovery. And if that's updated, then you know that then it's fixed in there for the Wi-Fi issue. This also fixed an issue that a lot of people were seeing where they were getting a keychain not found when they were connected to Wi-Fi. So this issue is fixed too. And even if you hit cancel or OK, it would still connect, but it was a more of an annoyance. So I'm glad that that was fixed. And I just wanted to go over this since I didn't cover that in the previous update. Now let's take a look at some Geekbench 5 benchmark scores. Now, when I run the benchmark, I always make sure I try to close all the apps and I make sure that we're plugged into power and that we do not have any spotlight indexing happening after the update. On the 12.6.1 update, we had a 1751 single core and a multi-core 7757. And after the update on 12.6.2, we ran a 1756 and a 7745. So really close. And that's exactly what we're looking for to make sure that there's no issues with the update. All right, now that we got that new stuff out of the way, let's talk about some unsupported Mac news for the Open Core Legacy Patcher on Mac OS Monterey. On our test Mac today, we've got a 2012 mid 15 inch MacBook Pro and we updated it to 12.6.2 and we're running the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.5.2. Now, a couple things here. There was a small issue where if you are running a version of the patcher that is not the latest version, you will not get the pop up message that you expect to get after you install the update and you need to reapply the volume patches. For most of you, that's gonna be fine because you know that you need to go in here if you don't see this message. You go in here and you're gonna run these post install root patches anyway. Or if you're running, for example, Big Sur, it'll tell you that no patches are available or it'll tell you that all the patches are already installed. So you can see here that we root patch today and everything is just fine. But again, if you do not see this message for some reason, this bug is fixed and it'll be put into 0.5.3. That'll be coming out sometime in the future. There's no issues that I've seen reported for either Big Sur, Mac OS Monterey, or Ventura. So it's looking really good and that's wonderful to see. Let me know in the comments if you updated to 12.6.2 or Ventura 13.1 or Big Sur 11.7.2 and how did your install go? Make sure you, like I said, update to the latest version of Open Core Legacy Petra app before you make the jump and you should be a-okay. Should you install the Mac OS Monterey 12.6.2, my recommendation is that you should due to all the security fixes in this release, especially with Safari 16.2 and all those WebKit issues, along with that Wi-Fi issue where, where you were disconnecting in a large environment like school, work, or an airport. So that's a great fix that's in 12.6.2. You don't want to be caught in a situation where you're getting disconnected and you don't want to have to update where you are to the latest version just to get fixed for that Wi-Fi issue. My recommendation is yes for 1262. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up or a share. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, you can click on that Mr. Macintosh logo here to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to follow me for the latest Mac news, you can do so on Twitter and Mastodon. And I want to thank all my Patreon members. I truly thank you and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.